So let's take this big down. And we just made it back up to the top here. Had a really good snow uh, last night. Rained like crazy down there in the basin. And uh, we thought we'd have a lot of elk moving around, so we busted up here. It's uh, five o'clock, just barely. And Ian's got the tag, my, my oldest boy. Uh, he drew a good tag this year, so we're gonna try to hunt him for a good bull. He's never killed an elk before. So I don't know how high his standards are. Probably anything that moves is in danger. Uh, I have my twin boys, Danner and Derek, with me as well. They're uh, they're just turning 12 this year, but late November in Wyoming you can't hunt until you turn 12. So they'll have a week and a half left to hunt. But this is their first backpacking experience. I think it'll be fun. But we're gonna start glassing these faces and see if we can pick us up an elk moving. We got a couple young young bulls up that mountain face. And, uh, they're not quite big enough for for how far away they are up there. At least I said they weren't big enough. They're they're quite a ways up there across the drainage, and I've been on that face before, and that's a long ways. Good news is is those young bulls being in this basin still means there's the, the other herd of elk's probably still here. They haven't been blown out. So that big bear track we saw down at the bottom probably didn't scare them all off. So. Keep looking, let's see if we can find a bigger one. <laughs> you ever seen one of those rocks roll down the mountain really fast? That was rolling really, really fast. <laughs> what do we got? Big bull? I hope so. We've been hearing this big bull. He's on this ridge about a thousand yards away. We got our glass up there just in time to see some cows. Just kind of filtering through the timber. They're coming down. We're hoping that that bull pops out on this flat with enough light left to shoot. For us, it'll be a long night waiting to see how big he is tomorrow morning, huh? Just gotta see him. Stop, right there, right, right there, take him. I'm on him. Take him. I'm awesome. He's dropping the sagebrush to the left. You see him? That was it, dude. Hey, it looks like it's pretty dark. We had him run across here right in front of us. Looks like it's a pretty good bull. We're gonna try to get up on here tomorrow morning and see if we can get on him when there's enough light to get a shot at him. But uh, if you'll uh, hold still for us long enough, we'll try to get him tomorrow morning. 
It's all over the place. We're out here on the edge. First shot, 25 mile an hour wind. Tell you what, that's a tough shot. Welcome to this week's Tough Shot. I'm Craig Thomason. Now, normally we have Mike out here doing these tough shots. He's no doubt the best shot in the office, but for some reason this week he couldn't make it. We think he's getting manscaped somewhere for all we know, but he's given us a scenario that some of us have experienced on the mountain. Now, what he wants us to do is replicate getting our heart rate up by running a quarter of a mile. We're gonna get up on this hill behind us and we're gonna run, I say we're, I guess I'm gonna do this, we're gonna run off this ridge, through the valley, and up to the next ridge. Now what we've got is a tip over that's about a 10 inch target. Definitely a kill zone target, and obviously it'll tip over if we can make this shot. So our challenge is to hit this target within 25 seconds of getting to this next ridge. Mike is thinking we can't pull it off, but Brian and I can. So while Mike's in getting his manicure, pedicure, whatever he's doing this week, we're gonna go make this tough shot, see if it's really possible. I'm gonna throw up. <coughs> That's a tough shot. Oh. We'll go back to the shop, we'll put it on the computer, and we'll see what we did. There's no way Mike Davidson is gonna beat me at that. I don't know if we made 25 seconds, but we hit it on the right side. Okay, so we finally got back from the range, got all the cactus quills pulled out of my elbows and lo and behold Mike's here with his feet up on the desk and he smells like creamy lotion so I don't know where he's been or what he's been doing but it's obviously it takes a lot of work to make this guy look good <laughs> anyway Mike we went out to the range we did your challenge we started the time from when my knee hit the ground to when there's impact on the steel cool I think we did pretty well I think this is probably tougher than any other shot you've pulled off so I feel pretty good about it you guys got the footage up let's check it out
39.5 seconds. <laughs> hey, a lot of extra time in in getting your earmuffs on. Uh, it looked like you had your eye protection on. That's just something we got to do on those tough shots. Um, yeah. Uh, just, to, just to show a good example, I guess. But yeah, a little waste of time there. But man, I don't know if you could have kept it any any shorter. So what's this 25 second baloney that you? Hey man, you, you get as much experience as I do. I'm not sure. It's just, it's just second nature, man. So, uh, good job, man. You nailed that plate square. I think we'll just work on your technique a little bit and speed you up. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough shot. Were you breathing hard? I was breathing really hard. Yeah. I was breathing. It sounded I mean, like he was moaning and groaning. And, yeah, that's tough. But, you know, real realistic situation. You hike to the top of the hill. You got a big bucker bowl in there. You got less than a minute to shoot. You know, that's that's real time, that's how it happened. But hey, we hit the kill zone target in 49.05. I dare say you would have been 50 plus. I think my grandma could have done it faster. <laughs> hey, good shot, man. One of the most confusing subjects that uh, we, we have to talk about when we're using ballistics programs is the inputs that help us define what our air density is. Uh, a lot of different methods out there that exist. Uh, we're pretty keen on uh, a couple methods ourselves. Now, when we're talking about air density, essentially what we're looking for is the air pressure and the air temperature and then also humidity plays a small factor. Air pressure is just relating the amount of air that's that's in a column up above us and if we're higher on the mountain then we have a smaller column of air so there's less pressure, less weight of air standing on top of us. If we're down at sea level then uh, you know we have a little bit heavier column of air. There's two different ways to report pressure. Uh, the first is by measuring the raw reading where you're standing. Another method of reporting uh, pressure is correcting that raw measured value, that station pressure, correcting it back to sea level. And the reason why we do this is so when we report weather conditions, we can see a, a changing weather pattern. So we can call that the corrected pressure or the uh, absolute pressure. Um, th those, are, those are some different terms used. Sometimes it's just called barometric pressure. When we're shooting and using a ballistics program, really what we want is just that station pressure. Your Kestrel will do it. Uh, most of your little watch devices will do it. Uh, the G7BR2 rangefinder, that will measure your, your actual station pressure. Uh, those devices are the, uh, what we want to use to measure, and the output from those devices is what we want to use in the program. Now let me show you a, a quick tip here. Uh, to eliminate a lot of the confusion on the pressure, I like to use an equivalent altitude. So if we go up on the mountain to 7,000 feet, uh, it automatically corrects uh, the inputs on your program for the station pressure that we're gonna see. So that station pressure at 7,000 feet for standard conditions is 23.09 inches of mercury. Um, you'll also see that it gives us the, uh, the, the standard conditions for temperature as well. Now, it, when I'm shooting and hunting, most of the time I know approximately what the altitude is. Uh, and I can guess pretty close what the temperature is. So for me, using altitude, let's say we go to 6,000 feet now, uh, the standard temperature is 38, but I know that it's more like 60 degrees outside. So now what I've done is I've put an altitude in, I've got my standard station pressure, and now I've updated that input for 60 degrees for a little finer uh, input on my temperature. If I'm using my sta uh, station pressure measurement device, and I, I know this is actually 24.05, I can go ahead and make that input, and it will further refine the inputs on the ballistics program. Uh, so for any elevation that you enter into the G7 program, it is going to give you the standard conditions, station pressure, and temperature. And if you have any information that's even better than that, let's say you've measured your temperature, then go ahead and put it in and just let the station pressure ride. Or if you've measured it, go ahead and enter that as well. Now, one last bit before we go. There is an, a, another way to use elevation to get uh, your, your air density. 
Um, it's called density altitude. This is fairly common in uh, airplane terminology. I've got a little chart here I want to show you. Density altitude basically just combines air density um, uh, by, by showing us the elevation or the pressure altitude with the air temperature, combining them into one number. It essentially relates uh, your current conditions, your temperature and your elevation, to uh, standard conditions. So uh, one way to do that is to you know, have a device that outputs density altitude or have a calculator that does it. Or if you look at this chart, it explains how it works. If you've got a pressure, uh, let's say our pressure altitude is 5,000 feet and my temperature in Fahrenheit, let's say it's uh, 80 degrees. So 80 degrees, 5,000 feet, that gives me approximately 5, 6, 7, 7,000 on my DA. So each one of these uh, slash lines are my density altitude and that's a single number that represents pressure altitude and temperature. Let's do another example. Okay, it's, it's pretty cold, it's zero degrees Fahrenheit and I'm hunting up in Canada Canada, we've got uh, uh, 4,000 feet elevation. So here's five and then four. So at zero degrees Fahrenheit, uh, my density altitude is approximately five, four, three, two, one, zero. So we're about uh, 1,000 feet is what my density altitude is. So that's a really unique way to, uh, to simplify those inputs to the very uh, elemental number a single number input gets you your pressure and uh, temperature inputs. I'm not a big fan of that because it doesn't necessarily relate to where you are right now. So uh, you should be able to use any ballistics program, any ballistics tool, and uh, get good inputs and good outputs. I'm Aaron Davidson. Join me next week for another shooting tip here on Long Range Pursuit. spotted just a few hundred yards off the trailhead we left our packs there we're gonna head up get up on top if we can get one down we'll just hike back to the truck grab our packs and then go back him out and they're just up there now Can't see them, they might have went in the timber. I'm right at 537, buddy. Let's see if we can get him the scope. Take him right there. Nope. Better put another one in. Let's go. There we go, buddy. All right. Good. Yes. Good shot, Adam. Yeah, sweet. That, that went right where it's supposed to go.
Yep. Right in the shoulder. It just took him a minute to bleed out on his lungs. Good shot. Um, Finally. Well, the cool thing is, is there's an old abandoned forest road right below. We'll probably only have to pack out probably a quarter of a mile, 500 yards. Yeah. That beats the five mile hike in that we did the last day, doesn't it? Yeah. I actually wanted to hike out of meat. Oh, we'll put, we'll put some meat on your back. You'll be done by the time we get to the truck. It's, You'll be finished. It's first elk. First elk? Yeah. You got him right here. Come on, guys, let's check him out. Looks like he's down. All right in the shoulder. Oh, yeah. He's down. Nice. What do you think, bud? Good first bowl, huh? I can beat that next time. Well, it's kind of tough when uh, when it's either hunting or football, right? Yeah. You get you take one weekend off, you miss a couple games, and you hope you're successful so you don't, you don't have to miss any more games. Did good. We worked really hard yesterday up in the snow. Had that snow on us all night. We were fighting 10-inch snow all morning getting out of there. Yeah. I think we're going to go ahead and quarter him up. I'll, I'll take a rear. Mike will take a rear. I call back straps. We'll probably take the back straps. You guys can take a front. What do you think? No, I call back straps. <laughs> Lance just got to carry the horns out, right? No. Horns and cape? Yeah. Well, I got a sharp knife. Let's get to work. Hunting apparel for long-range pursuit provided by Sitka and Kinetrek Boots of Montana. License applications made through Cabela's Tags. Brought to you by Gunworks, G7 Optics, Night Force, Hornady, and Caldwell Shooting Supplies. <laughs> that was walking too far. A yeah. mile ahead of us. And there's a black a bear, himself. like 50 yards in front of me. And I ran and he ran. Am I laying in a cactus? Oh, oh. Oh, but you're laying on the rangefinder. <laughs> <laughs> 